<clears throat> okay, so this is the next two paintings I'm working on. Both are still a Bryce Canyon. Um, haven't finished this. I'll zoom in when I'm doing the detail. <clears throat> the cloud formations, I used a toothbrush to make it look like it's raining. Um, I'm not going to do a demonstration on the sky itself. I did that in a previous video. I'm, I am going to leave this alone because I'm just going to put a little light tan. So it might look like snow, but it'll, I'm going to put a tan wash. I'm going to work on this area right here. Uh, I'm going to scroll down. And this is another sky with Bryce. Only a closer view of the rock formations. And I'm going to do a demonstration on that. I'm not going to do the whole uh, thing because it just takes too long. But if I could do, do a section in here, or a little small part, it's the same technique I would use for the whole thing. So I'll do a demonstration on that. I might do a little something on the clouds. But... Um, as for right now, I'm just going to come back in. So I'm going to do a little work on here and then zoom in. Okay, so. First thing I'm going to do is kind of wet the surface a little bit. Now that'll kind of Give me a little play that I can use with. Um, so I'm going to use a smaller brush and come in. And just, that's too much. Now, the thing about watercolors, and that's why everybody fears them, is if you make a mistake, it's hard to go in reverse. So it's best to come in light, and then you could deal with some of that other stuff that you run into. Now I'm going to need a little bit more orange in there. So I'm going to come in here. And just add a little bit of orange. I'm doing kind of a curve line. So the curve line will indicate that it's kind of popping out. If I go the opposite, it'll look like it's going into the surface and let's see, I might just get a smaller smaller brush and uh, come in here and just define some lines and that's kind of how I did this whole thing I'm just looking for little cracks and crevices that just naturally appear on there so it's all kind of random now, if you wanted to know a little bit more about my work, I would say go to my tour of my studio. Uh, because I was a natural history illustrator and sculptor and model maker and designer and all that stuff. Um, my work, uh, the requirement is you need to do a whole bunch of stuff. So I designed dioramas and created them and worked on us I'm a scientific illustrator so I did that for different departments so it's very challenging because it's like somebody comes up with an idea and then it's your job to make it work figure out a way how to do it uh, it's easy for somebody to say make a 10-story building I want it with a deck <laughs> it's another thing trying to make a 10-story building with a deck um, and that's just the life of a lot of artists. People come up with ideas, and then it's your job to finish that. Now, I do have sculptures at the Los Angeles Zoo and the Long Beach Cabrillo Aquarium. And they're scientific uh, uh, sculptures, so they're really detailed because uh, that was part of my... Now, this is all loose, so I'm not... I could get really detailed, but... I. I don't care about doing that. I'm just painting for my own pleasure. And because I was a teacher for 15 years after I was working for the museum, um, I had all kinds of different levels. Um, so I, I'm doing kind of some something for um, people that would like a little bit more detail uh, in their work. 
Um, some may be intermediate and they're not sure the next level with watercolors and sometimes they just want this really loose looking uh, technique and there is that technique and like I said I have it on another video um, but I'm not going to do it on this and you can see when you look at this and then you look at the other ones this is how I did that um, now I did do a demonstration a scientific illustration for the Getty Museum in Brentwood um, and that was like wow it was just an awesome part of my life um, and they did archive my work so my work is there with some other of my heroes so that was kind of a cool thing uh, but now I just started wanting to teach elementary middle school college and that's what I used to do now I'm hoping that people would share my work uh, I want to reach more people than I would in a normal uh, semester in a school environment unfortunately that doesn't really happen a lot of people don't share my work because uh, I wanted to teach more people than I would in a classroom um, but you know just the way things work um, and um, it is kind of frustrating because um, I wanted to reach more people and you can see how this is working out I'm gonna come down here to this part uh, I might do a little something on the clouds okay so this is another way I, I do clouds uh, I'll put it down here and I'll see little areas like this and I look at it and I say, okay, maybe I can bring out a little bit of light as the clouds on the top would have more of a light reflection. So I'm just pulling out the color, blending. Uh, this looks a little funky to me, so I'm just going to... And that's just kind of... I, I, I lay down a foundation and then um, go back into it. So like right here... Um, you can see that it's kind of dark in here, and I'll just kind of blend that out a little bit. You can see the lightness coming in. And that's, this is all imaginary. Uh, and like I said, I have a demonstration how to do the, um, the clouds, and it's all like piecework. So I'll just do random blues, come in with a lighter, always going darker. So in other words, um, then the blue is all different places and then the yellow is coming into different areas and then kind of a lighter orange and then a darker orange and sometimes what I'll do is add a little purple so it looks like a storm cloud now I'm not going to do a whole bunch uh, but I am going to just kind of give you an idea how this thing works so if I come in here and this is just random And you can see I'm kind of just just coming in and you can see my my paintbrush is just going really wild because I don't want that strong darkness but I still want to make it look natural and if I kind of get too dark it won't look natural and you can see it I'm just gonna come in here and just move my brush around and blend in and it just gives it a little bit more depth. Now this other stuff down here. Um, now this is what takes time. So I'm, I'm going to do this whole thing the same way. I'll probably zoom in so you can see a little bit better. So again, this is the foundation. So I just put it like this color all over and then start building up some lights and darks. And that's just the way it works. So now what I want to do is come in here and just do a little detail. Same way as I did the other one. Do some of that roundness. And just going really fast. Well, give the illusion of formations and little inclusions into the rock formation 
And it's a very easy, but you can't go slow. If you go too slow, it'll look stiff. And that's the one thing you don't want to do. You want to keep it fluid. You want to follow patterns. Come in. And just this little randomness of going back and forth. It'll start to define edges. And then I'll just kind of go back in, lay in layers. Over the lines. I did do a four-story Anasazi cliff dwelling. Uh, made the actual maquettes and the models and then did the large construction. Uh, but when I did the illustrations to show different factions of people what the plan was. I had to do multiples. Uh, I did uh, the bricks in this very same technique. Now this is too strong. So I'm gonna see if I can pull some of that color out. I want it dark, but I don't want it so that it's like black. So this is just a matter of coming in with a damp brush and dabbing it out. But doing that also gives that cavernous area a little bit more form without going all that darkness. You can see it's getting lighter here. Anyway, so that's kind of the way I did these rock formations. Um, and I just kind of start with a larger brush and then work my way in for the detail. And you can see it's starting to look very Bryce-like. Um, anyway, so that's kind of the demonstration that I would show you how to do this. And so you have kind of different areas. So this is the way it starts off, then more layers, and then getting darker, then pulling out highlights, putting in shadows. Then you saw that this was too dark, so I came in and dabbed it and did it fine line work. Anyway, so that's kind of the techniques. Take care. Hello, um, I'm Steve Melendres, a model maker, illustrator, scientific illustrator, sculptor, design after history museum in Los Angeles. Done a lot of different things, um, but I'm gonna be doing watercolor demonstrations of the techniques I've developed over the years. Um, and it's gonna go from a lot of different directions and also, I'm going to be doing videos, uh, I call them video posters for my daughter. So a lot of stuff that I can leave to my daughter about her crazy dad. <laughs> so um, I'm taking a lot of different directions, but mainly three. Um, so anyway, that's my introduction that I'm going to attach to every thing I'm doing now. So I don't have to repeat this. Be careful out there.